you know, I never could do that. Thank you. <laughs> okay, the witching hour is upon us. In fact, it's a little past, and it's uh, time to get underway. First of all, uh, I'd like to point out that this little gathering is really the brainchild of Jeff Baxter standing in the back of the back of the room back there. Always ready with a good suggestion. <laughs> and special thanks to Cindy Marshall, who's really hosting the event. This is, after all, her digs. And most of you have been here before. And the vittles and the sound system, otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear, which is, might be okay, <clears throat> are courtesy of John and Cecily. Cecily has a different last name than Charleston, but we'll call him John and Cecily Charleston, okay? No, she's right. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so without further ado, where is Mr. Chase? Ah. Rob Chase is, of course, our county treasurer. In case you didn't know that, you should. After all, he's protector of your money. Ed, here, Rod. My fault, I, you know, I, you had a Jeff Baxter. Okay, so uh, glad you all could make it. This is a pretty good turnout, so I'm pretty optimistic, you know, about the future of the city of Spokane Valley. I was on the Rick Rydell show today, and I got to talk to him a little bit about, about things, and I said I invited, uh, you know, the listeners out here tonight, so maybe some of you are here because of that. But I did say, you know, we got to keep this thing going uh, with, um, you know, we got to return, uh, let's see, Sam, or no, Arnie Woodard, and uh, also, you know, bring in Sam Wood, too, because the city of Spokane Valley, I think, is probably the best run city in the state, so we need to keep this this thing going. And, you know, maybe they could, we, the, you know, other cities, you know, maybe cities very close by to us could look at the, the success they've had and, and emulate them, too. So. Uh, we have several elected officials here tonight. Ed Pace is, is here tonight. Ed Pace, he's on the Valley City Council. Okay. Rod Higgins, who just introduced me. Wave at everybody, Rod. Okay, and uh, Dave White, he's running, he's a candidate for the city of Spokane. And Mike Fagan, uh, Mike, stand up. He deserves your applause, too. We have our county prosecutor. I'm glad to see Larry Haskell here tonight. Larry. And my own deputy treasurer, Mike Volts, who I think has a good political career in front of him. But he is kind of the wind beneath my wings. And uh, so I'm, I'm really glad to be able to introduce him. So. I thought, I'd, no, wait, actually, um, I'm getting to that, yeah, <laughs> because Bob McCallison's going to speak a little bit tonight. So, um, Bob McCaslin is, um, you know, I'll tell you, uh, I became an orphan at the age of 52, and uh, so I knew old Bob McCaslin Sr., and I said, Bob, my parents are gone, would you mind adopting me so I could have your name? <laughs> and so there could have been three Bob McCaslins actually here tonight, but, you know, <laughs> Rob McCaz, I would have changed to Bob. I would have gone all the way, I guess, you know. But um, uh, anyway, I couldn't convince him to do it, so I guess Bob, Bob Jr. got the, the nod from, from uh, Bob Sr. And uh, let's see, Bob, did you stand up? Where are you at? Oh, there he is, okay, Bob McCaslin Jr. <laughs> and Matt Shea, Representative Matt Shea. Stand up, Matt. Matt. 
Okay, great. And um, you know, I was proud to be Matt's uh, first campaign manager, and he's had a, you know, I felt good about things then, and he's just done wonderful things in Olympia too. So really proud to have him here in the in the depth of the fourth district. And you know, if um, Spokane Valley, city of Spokane Valley, is the best municipality in the state, I think the fourth district is the best district in the state, thanks to <laughs> Bob McCaslin and uh, Matt Shea. And also uh, Mike Patton, too, who couldn't make it tonight. So we'll go ahead and, uh, without further ado, we'll let uh, Sam Wood give his elevator speech. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Well, uh, I have to start by saying thank you very much for coming. This is a humbling experience right here. Uh, I've never been out in public office, and to see all you folks here to take this Friday night and come here and support this effort is amazing. So I want to thank each and every one of you for coming. It's uh, thank you very, very much. Um, this is sort of like standing on the first tee of a big tournament. I've got a brother here who plays a lot of golf, and I'm sure he understands what that feels like. And any of you out there who play golf, you know what that feels like. Mark? But I'm going to work through this, okay? First, I'd like to introduce my wife. Uh, I used to say she was the brains of the deal, but um, without her, she runs our family, she runs my little business books. Um, she's a very important person in my life. Rojay, RJ, would you stand up, please? Just wave. God really blessed me when she gave me that woman over 30 years ago. Uh, my daughter is sitting right next to her, Samantha, my firstborn. Next to her is Nick her husband, my niece, Jenny. I might forget some of my family if I'm not careful here. And two of the most precious people in my life, Jordan in the pink. And little Lacey that my wife's feeding so she doesn't cry. Lacey's two months old, so. Uh, God is my first priority, that's my second. And my third is my community. Um, six months ago, if someone would have told me I'd be standing here in front of you folks asking for your vote, I would have told them they were crazy. Uh, I was pretty content. I was, uh, I'm on the planning commission for the Spokane Valley. I'm chairman of Carnhope Water District. And I'm on the scope board. So I looked at those things and I thought, wow, those are uh, pretty good things to be doing. I was pretty involved. And um, I get a call two months ago. I guess I, I should say why. I asked myself the question, why? And two months ago, I get a call from Arnie Woodard, and he said, Sam, Ed, and Rod, and I would like to meet with you. And so we met, and they said, we'd like you to run for Spokane Valley City Council. And uh, we want you to help us make a difference, and you can be a part of that. And I thought, I said, well, I, I'm, I thought it was making a difference. <laughs> so I said, well, I'm going to need to think about that. And I thought about it. And of course, now you know what the results of that contemplation was. I'm standing here in front of you asking for your support and your vote. I think we can make a difference. We've got to keep the city moving in the right direction. We got representatives over on the state that are doing that, fighting hard for the fourth, and we need Spokane Valley to do their part. 
Um, a vote, I, a vote for me. I'll give you a, a couple of things I stand for. A vote for me is smaller, more efficient government. And I mean that. I, I, those are not just words. Uh, the city has 87 employees. I'm a believer in baseline budgeting. I'm a believer in looking at everything and examining it and see if we need it. I think the Spokane Valley needs to be good at really two, really good, two things really good at. One are the roads you walk on, uh, drive on, and then the other one is public safety. And of course, our parks. Uh, next, I believe strongly in property rights. Uh, they're being eroded as we speak by the federal government and the EPA. Uh, they're coming after us. They're coming after our rights to use our property. I want to be a defender of that. I want to push back against that tide. We need to do that in the valley. We each have property rights and we deserve their God-given rights. And the government is starting to plunder those rights. And I, I think that's enough. I think we need to stand up and say that's enough. The third thing I want to be a voice for small business. I was in business for myself for 45 years. I spent 27 years of it with my brother Blaine here in the restaurant business. I got to feel what it's like to be under the, the pressure and the restraints of government. They're relentless. They're like hounds from hell. <laughs> B&O taxes and just on regulation after regulation after regulation. We need to put a stop to that. We each of us have to step out and do something about it. So this is my way of trying to do something about it. I want to be a, vo a voice for those sole proprietors out there that are struggling to survive, to feed their families. They need a voice. I want to be that voice. I have a heart for them, and I hope I can do the job that needs to be done. Um, I could go on and on, but I'm not going to because we've got lots of folks here. I would like to just encourage each of you, if you want to have a neighborhood meeting, bring your friends and neighbors together, give me a call. I'd love to sit down with you and talk to you about your concerns and your issues, and I mean that. I know Rod Wood, I know Ed Wood, and I know Arnie Wood. So feel free to do that. Any time, any place, we'll make it happen. Um, I'd like to close with this, if I may, if you'll bear with me, just a little drink of water. This is from uh, Philippians 2, verse 2 and 3, if I may read them. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look at not only your own interest, but also the interests of others. That's a great message that was delivered, and I intend to try to live by that. Thank you very much for listening. God bless America and God bless the Spokane Valley. Well, I think Sam Wood's a natural, isn't he? I mean, he's... <laughs> okay, um, Arnie, are you out there somewhere? Okay. We get to hear from Arnie next. <laughs> oh, better get another drink. Yeah. <laughs> Well, first of all, now you can see why I called Rod, uh, uh, Sam. I called Rod too, but anyhow, I called Sam. Uh, Sam's Sam's one of us. He's one of the fourth district. He's he's why we put Matt and Bob and Mike Padden back in office year after year, because they fight for us. That's who Sam's going to be. So I hope that you will help tremendously. I hope I have a few coattails. I don't know. I have a competitor. 
um, that also has name recognition. But you know what? I can tell you why I'm gonna win. It's, it's my friend Laurel Orr. Laurel couldn't be here tonight. Some of you might probably know Laurel Orr. And I'll tell you, she couldn't be here, but she said, I just want you to know that I support you. That I don't have much money, but I'll give you what I have. And you know, just her support and her vote is what means something to me. She did give me a very small widow's mite. But you know, it's those widow mites that are gonna put, propel me back into to the council for the second term. And I'm gonna continue to do what I promised to do the first time. Uh, because I've been doing it. So what did I do? Gosh, if I could remember, I'd tell you. <laughs> Anyhow, I promised to reduce and elim eliminate burdensome regulation. Spokane Valley today has less regulation, building, signs, lighting, landscaping, other things. Not as little as I'd like it to be, but we have less than we had when I started five, almost five years ago with the initial appointment and then the election. I encourage citizen participation and we have had tremendous turnout for the major issues in Spokane Valley. People have come out because we've asked them to come out and then we listened. Gosh, what a novel thought. We might listen to you that hire me. What a novel thought. And I know that's why Bob was put in office. It's why I know Matt continues to be put in office. And I know that Mike Patton does the same thing. Protect our reserves. We retain a 50% operating budget reserve. We do not drop below that, no matter what you're going to hear. I have never voted to reduce our reserves. We have used your money that was in excess of that during this recession to buy 20 or 25 or 30 percent more roads covered so you're driving on smoother roads. We have used it to buy parkland or other things because we could make it go further. We did reduce it and transfer. We reduced it a little bit from the 76% we had, and then we transferred the majority of it into a capital fund. That's one of the reasons we're gonna primarily pay for our new city hall with cash. At least half of it. At least half of it in the balance. <laughs> the balance of it's going to come from a bond that is going to be about the same payment as what we're paying for the lease right now in the building we're in. But at the end of the lease, we don't have anything. At the end of the bond payments, we're going to have a, a piece of property. So it's kind of like your house. We've got to maintain it, though, so that's, that's always fun. I also said that we'd balance budgets based on revenues. We have been in balance every year for the last five years, and actually started about six years ago. We've stayed in balance, and we turned the curve down and then it's climbing at about 1% as opposed to the 7.5 to 9.5 it was growing at. That's not easy. Talk to the, your representatives. They know what that curve's like. We also put into place a, a, uh, a, pro, a production-based or, or performance-based union contract. There's no automatic COLAs. There is no cola in the city of Spokane Valley anymore. You are based, your, your income raises and whatnot are based on your performance. What a novel thought to have government working based on performance. <laughs> and it's one of the few in the nation, by the way. The union went back the last, and we're coming up on it again, but the union people, I understand, went back to the union hall and had to report to their uppers, and, and they weren't very happy. Why? because they didn't know what happened to them. And I'm not saying we have the strongest negotiators in the city. I don't think we have strong negotiators at all, but we put, we put that one together. So that was very good. I've advocated for jobs and business. If we don't have the business folks, if they're not collecting the sales tax, if they're not pay, paying the, t the property taxes on their businesses and stuff, guess who gets to pay the freight for a city? the residents. So if we're not 
advocating for business, then we're going to have to increase your taxes to carry it. And we're pay how do we as a city raise ta uh, money? It's property taxes, sales taxes, and a few other fees. But those are the two big ones, property taxes and sales tax. That's where our capital, uh, or I should say our operating budget comes from. And our police force uses two and a half times of what our property taxes are. Our contract with the police for the sheriff's department for our policing is about $24 million between the police and the public safety. We collect 11 million. That's really making your dollars go somewhere. And yet public safety is one of the two priorities that we are supposed to do as a city. So pro public safety, infrastructure. We don't do anything else. We're not supposed to. Gosh, isn't that novel? <laughs> well, we do what we're supposed to. That's what Matt Shea, Bob McCaslin, and Mike Padden, and, and when Senator uh, Baxter. Baxter, sorry Jeff, I was going to call you Senator Jeff, but anyhow, that's why we put those people over in, in Olympia to try to make sure that they're doing what's mandated, not everything else that everybody wants them to do. We're, we have responsibilities to our taxpayers to do what we're supposed to, not more than that. And if we can do more, hopefully it's more in the infrastructure or public safety. I could go on on a couple more things. That's, what I, that's what's on your Slim Jim. This is my last time Slim Jim. All I can do is change and say, I have done. I have voted for, I have helped with, and it's not just me, it's the likes of Rod, it's the likes of Ed, it's been the likes of a few other people, but there's something that happens, it seems like, when you get to be the mayor. They seem to go soft, soft in the knees. And I'm not criticizing anybody in particular, but that's who's running against me is our former mayor. Now, Tom Talley's a great guy. I love the man, he, re he retired. But you have to make a choice. Do you want me in there or do you want Tom? We both have records and they're pretty much different. So I just ask that if you're voting for me, vote for Sam. If you're voting for Sam, I would love your vote, but please help us put Sam in too because we really need to keep this direction going. You all have earned it. It's good to have a government that's responsive to you, and we're going to try to keep making it more responsive. Thank you for supporting me in the past, and I do ask for your vote. Thank you. Well, all this talk by Arnie about the widow's might, and Sam brought up uh, second Philippians, and you know, one of the best things we can do is, you know, uh, dedicate whatever our endeavor is to the Lord. So we need to put God first, and if you don't do that, the next best thing is better late than never. So Ed Pace, I forgot to have you say your prayer. Do you want to come up here and, you know, uh, go ahead and, uh, let's, we need to dedicate this to the Lord, and I think we'll be successful. As we pray tonight, let's remember that the God who created the universe, the only God, the one God, that God gave us and gives us the right to protect our rights to life, liberty, and property that comes from God. Is this okay? Okay. All right. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gathering tonight. We thank you for the hard work of the folks that put it together. We thank you for the use of this hall. Um, we thank you for the good food that we've got. And Lord, we ask that you would bless these candidates, bless Sam and Arnie as they're working hard to win the hearts and the minds of the voters of the city of Spokane Valley. And Lord, we ask that your will prevails, that your will for us to have the rights to life, liberty, and property prevails. We ask also, Lord, that you would bless all the citizens here, bless the elected officials here, and fill them with your Holy Spirit so they'll be energized to work hard and work for you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Um, also, uh, we forgot to 
pledge allegiance to the flag. So if you stand and face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, in the 4th District, we don't necessarily do things in the right order, but we get it done. <laughs> so, um, speaking next will be uh, my almost brother, but certainly my brother in law Bob and Kaslin Jr. Let's hear it for Bob. Thanks, Rob. I appreciate it. Um, I don't think I've ever read from the book of Second Philippians, though. I... Philippians <laughs> 2. Oh. Well, what a privilege it is to be here. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I, was, I was reading the other day. This is uh, something that Groucho Marx said, but often uh, he said things that showed a lot of wisdom. He said, politics is the art of looking for trouble, finding it everywhere, diagnosing it incorrectly, and applying the wrong solutions. <laughs> I, I think... I think, I think Matt and I have seen a lot of that happen. Here's the thing, though. With both Sam and Arnie, you know, yeah, they're looking for trouble. They're going to find it everywhere. But they're going to diagnose it correctly. And they're going to apply the right solutions. And, you know, the thing that I've noticed about both of these gentlemen, and, and, I, and I think Matt would agree with me, is that in our job in Olympia, we find over and over and over again this kind of knee-jerk reaction to, to problems, okay? Oh, there's a problem. We have to fix it. And not only do we have to fix it, we have to raise taxes to do it. And, I'm, and it's wrong because, you know, government is not the solution to people's problems. Less government is the solution, okay? And uh, I, I, I really appreciate both Sam and Arnie because, you know, they're people who are willing to, to serve and, and, and they don't get a lot of money to do that. <laughs> It's, it's not a well-paying job, but, but they, they, they do want to serve. And that, and, that, and that those verses of scripture that Sam shared earlier really shows a great picture. You know, we're not supposed to be in life for ourselves. We're supposed to be in it for our common citizens, the people that we know. Um, we're supposed to be serving them. And they understand that really well. Um, you know, in closing, Thomas Jefferson once said, we should never judge a politician by his age, only by his works. Well, both Arnie, Arnie and Sam have told me, you know, ever since you told us that, we stopped worrying. <laughs> so I, I just want to urge you to support these two fine gentlemen. Thank you. I knew that about Philippians too. I was just testing the, the crowd, you know. You know and, so anybody would catch that. I know it's, you know, Philippians 2 is one of my favorite uh, chapters and it's right in there by Second Hezekiah, as I recall. So anyway, uh, speaking next will be Matt Shayo needs no introduction. Let's hear it for Matt. All right, so an Irishman walks into a pub, of course. He goes up, to the, goes up to the bar and he orders seven shots of Jameson and seven pints of Guinness. And the bartender lays them all out and one after another he drinks them down straight without stopping. Bartender looks at him and, wow. The guy says, I'd like to have seven more pints of Guinness and seven more shots of Jameson if it pleases you. He says, you're drinking kind of fast tonight, aren't you? He said, yeah, you would if you got what I got. 
Bartender says, well, what do you got? Two dollars. <laughs> and that is the Democrat spending plan in Olympia. So I was uh, sitting down tonight and I, I, I opened up a fortune cookie because I always love doing that. And, and you got, I got to read this to you because I think it's, it's prophetic. It is easier to resist at the beginning than at the end. Yes. <laughs> That's why we're here tonight, isn't it? Right? That's why we're here tonight. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to give it to Sam. There, he'll, he'll, he will. He'll keep that one. As I always start off speeches, I always say our hope is not in man, our hope is in Jesus Christ, because we're going to be talking about politics, but we've got to keep our focus where it's supposed to be. And we're here tonight because we need warriors in government. We need people of principle in government, people that won't waver no matter what is whispered in their ear, no matter who makes a phone call to them, but they do the right thing because it's the right thing to do. Those are the kind of people that we need in office. And Sam and Arnie, I think not only talk about that, but they live it. And that's why they make the best candidates for local office. They have opponents who are in favor of raising the gas tax. We're talking in favor of raising the gas tax anywhere between 12 cents and 15 cents per gallon of gas. Now this is on top of what the governor wants to do, which may raise the price of a gallon of gas by 60 cents to over a dollar. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm hearing from everybody, friends, family, neighbors, they can't afford it anymore. They can't. And especially when in Olympia, we've got a bridge literally that didn't float right. They had to lift out of the water and glue together with epoxy. That is not hyperbole. They had an off-ramp built in the wrong place. They had a bureaucrat say, hey, why don't you remove that stuff from one side of a ferry? And then they didn't counterbalance it, so the ferry leans to one side. And they have a, now a gigantic hole in downtown Seattle. And thank God that multi-million dollar boring machine didn't get stuck under a building. And they have this huge hole downtown, and they're pumping water out of it, and now the buildings around it are starting to sink. That is inefficient government that needs to be fixed first before they can even come to us to ask for a tax increase. And you know what? If they did fix it, and we quit wasting money over there, we wouldn't need it. In fact, right now, 7.7% increase in tax revenue regarding the gas tax this year over last. We actually have more money coming into the coffers. And we're not doing the right thing. Sam and Arnie will do the right thing here in Spokane Valley. Spokane Valley is a light, literally, in Washington State amidst the darkness of tax and spend despair. It is an example. In fact, they get sick of me saying it over there. Well, Spokane Valley can do it. I mean, they have a balanced budget. They have no debt. Over 50% reserves. How come you guys, can, will you quit saying that, Matt? We hate it when you say that. Spokane Valley did it. Why don't you guys do what they did? I don't know. It's working. That's what, that's what we need to see everywhere in this state. Spokane Valley is an example, not only for Washington State, but I, I would say for maybe Detroit and Chicago, for example. <laughs> so I want to tell a real quick story, too, about Sam. So when I first sat down to talk to him face to face, uh, one of the things he said, not only was God his priority, but he said, I believe in doing the right thing no matter what. And he said it unprompted. And that's what we should expect from every single candidate for elected office. Do the right thing no matter what. Do the right thing no matter what. Last but not least, uh, I, I do want to thank somebody tonight who's kind of an unsung hero, never gets a lot of applause, but he's always at every single event. He always drags all of the sound equipment in here and sets up and has to listen to all of us all the time and never gets a chance to rebut any of it. So let's give John Charleston a round of applause. So, so tonight before you leave, let's send Sam Wood, let's send Artie Woodard back, and let's make sure that we defend freedom locally. God bless you guys and thank you for being here tonight. And I will talk to you outside and may we Resist now at the beginning rather than later. Amen. All right.
Okay, thank you, Matt. Thank you for letting me MC. Since I am MC, I get to tell one Irish joke, which is, um, <laughs> did you hear about the Irishman who stayed out all night? Patio furniture. <laughs> but one thing also you can do is, um, you can put a sign in your yard. It really looks good if people, if uh, candidates have signs in people's yards instead of plastered all over the highways. So please put a sign in your yard, put one in your neighbor's yard. Maybe he won't bother to remove it, you know. And um, there's a lot of good things we can do. Doorbelling and just getting the word out. These are good guys. And the city of Spokane Valley is successful, but when we donate to people like this and help them, we're part of that success too. So uh, one thing I would say, you know, uh, fill out your envelopes and, you know, give what, uh, you know, the Lord has led you to give and uh, look around the table and um, the table is there and look for someone who isn't speaking to anybody and maybe you'll make a new friend. Uh, let's not, you know, tie ourselves up to little knots of our favorite people to talk to, but, you know, I think um, a lot of good things, you know, the person you talk to might be the next person that runs for city, Valley City Council to take these guys places because someday you always have to be thinking about the present, but also about the future. Who are we going to pass the torch off to? Because it's a continuous battle. So anyway, uh, I guess the watch for, for the rest of the night is enjoy each other. And um, thank you, everybody.